Just on 8.19 here on Manx Radio TT, we're live at the show studio at the back of the TT Grandstand, joined by Josh Brooks. And coming up after 8.30, we'll have Tim Reeves and Mark Wilkes talking all things sidecar. Christy D. Haven, what have we got? Anybody well, getting we've on the got, Facebook Yeah, live? there's lots of people watching on Facebook. Hello to all of you. Uh, Helen's listening from Dublin, says great coverage and updates, very informative. Helen, Jerry and Bob the dog, that is. We've got uh, Zoe listening in South Africa, which is very exciting. Also supporting rider AJ Venter. Uh, we've got uh, questions and messages as well so uh, Simon says the Norton looks and sounds amazing and just wants to say have a great TT Josh which is very nice Uh, Steve says hi Josh what is your personal target for the TT and are you ever distracted by the incredible sound of the Norton while you're riding it (laughs) yeah this is a regular question it's always been a similar answer since I started Uh, you know I don't put as bizarre as it may sound I don't put a fixed target um the best I can ride, regardless of whether there's a target in place, is the best I can ride. Um, and if I try and go the same speed as Dean Harrison or the guy that's in, next in front of me or whatever, that's a dangerous method for, for going around the track. Um, you know, I'll, I'll ride the bike and learn and, and, and improve as quick as I can. And I'll set out. It's nice to have a pit board. It's nice to know where you are. It's nice to have encouragement um, that you're doing well. But... I find it really dangerous to, to, to fix a target because as soon as you don't meet that target, then it puts pressure on you because you're not performing as you would want to. Or if you over if you go past the target, you may get overconfident and then make a mistake. There's so many ways and methods for looking at it. So if you just use your best skill and best experience to put yourself in the, the best position you can be um, on the best machine, of course, and then um, if that means it's a fourth place, if that means it's a win you still rode your best anyway. You know, you didn't leave anything on the table. You didn't risk anything that you wouldn't, you, you weren't comfortable risking. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, sh- sure, I, following, you know, my improvements and progression, I think a, a podium this year is, is super possible. But if I don't achieve it, I won't be upset because I know I've ridden the best I can. Mm-hmm. So if that, that's sort of like the best uh, way I can describe how I go about it. Speaking of uh, riding the best you can around here, I noticed you put out a tweet at the start of the week which said, I wish I could explain what it's like to ride here, but I find it hard to put into words. Only riders will ever know, I guess. Have you got any better idea now Now that you're at the end of the week how to say it? <laughs> no, because I, I, I've ridden here, um, yeah. this is my fourth year, so there's not really, yeah, it's just, it's. I, I remember once I described it as I'm not that I've ever been to the moon, but I can only imagine it's to, to us. I mean, although there's hundreds of riders that have ridden um, around this TT course and only a selective few have ever been to the moon. Um, y- you know, I compare it to... It must be significant to someone's experience as that. To me, to me it is. It seems so extreme and so... Um, y- you know, there's so much that that you take from it. It's it, To me, it feels like something as, gra- as grand as, as going to the moon or something of that, 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 that volume, you know. It's... Um, yeah, it's, it's, I find it difficult to, to explain how a big of a thing we're doing, it seems, when you're riding. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, you're, you're super, super aware of what, uh, what could happen when it goes wrong. Like people go, oh, do you, do you just tune out or does, it just, does, that, does that go away? And, and, it, and it doesn't ever, you know, the first time you ride, you're like, well, this is... You know, if it's all going right, it's it'll be just perfect. But if it goes wrong, the if part, um, yeah, there, there's not a lot of uh, chance of anything, of any good story coming out of this. You know, so um, that that feeling, at least for me anyway, maybe other riders have a different perspective, but at least for me, that that awareness of of if if something goes wrong is is always there. You don't you don't feel like you ever get away from that. But it suited you from the very beginning, didn't it? Because you were the fastest newcomer when you got here, so that's it obviously suits yeah, you. Yeah, it, it it does, it does. Yeah, I, I believe it does. Um, yeah, again, I, I can't I can't speak for for other people. I only know what what I've experienced. But um, yeah, when the idea of coming here, uh, when after I first came and, and thought I wanted to come, it, it, it did make a lot of sense. It really suits me as a person. I'm I'm quite um, quite out there kind of. If if I wasn't in in motorcycle racing, I'd, I'd probably be doing, you know, something uh, of extreme jumping, nature. Jumping. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> trying to compare it, maybe big wave surfing in Hawaii or something. Is that why you're I'd, always catching air? I'd, yeah, <laughs> I'd always, I'd, I'd imagine if I was in a different sport or come up in a different, um, uh, with a different group of people when I was a young kid, I might have took on a different 
role and, and, and found the extreme in that too, you know. Yeah. So I think it does it does suit me and um you know, I've I had a motorcycle license before I had a car license, you know, it was I was just on bikes on the road and, and things straight away. So to to come and race here actually did did really really fit I felt fit my personality, but um, I took it very serious too. Like I come and I'd, I'd, I guesstimated about over a hundred laps I'd done in a vehicle um, of n- number of descriptions before I actually raced and turned a wheel and on in uh, enclosed roads. You know, so um, I did take it very serious and I put a lot of homework in and mm. and and got those results as as result of the uh, of the effort. Looking at the BSB so far this year, the McCams Yamaha, we've got to look at that as well because obviously you're riding that here. Uh, seventh so far, happy with that-ish? Uh, yeah, I am. Um, last night we had a transponder go mm-hmm. go down. It stopped working and people thought I was uh, wondering where I was on the track, it, um, even the team. But um, yeah, the, the reports from, from that uh, last night's practice, um, even though we didn't have a transponder, um, our own personal data mm-hmm. suggests that we were one of the fastest on track last night so okay. um with the 600 obviously. yeah with yeah, the 600 yeah. so yeah we're, we're very pleased with that at the moment and they would say the championship itself the bsb championship well just let's say seventh and nat for, for the team is that what you, you pleased with that i know you what was it what you four i can do you know i need new glasses oh okay you're talking points. about yeah, oh BSB, right you're talking yeah. about bsb because obviously that, that's the time with the mccamish yamaha and bsb yes, and then obviously right, last night right, i was going right. to talk to you about i was going to the bsb then i was going to look at last night later right. but it's all right we can cross any bridge <laughs> here in this show you know so <laughs> seventh in the bsb i mean see the series is good and we get, get well soon to shaky burn by the way after oh my goodness me that mm-hmm. poor fella the amount of things he hasn't broken is probably less than what he has broken isn't it the, the poor fella he's going to be better though but I've seen something he put on Twitter the other day that he's gone up and he's managed to waddle along in his little walker to get himself to the toilet so that can only be a good sign so get well soon shake, uh, Shane shaky burn of course the champion How, how's it been so far this year obviously Snetterton is the next round isn't it yeah, we're going to go to Snedderton from here. Um, it was the same last year, and, and when you get back to short circuit racing after here, it, it feels like you're going dead slow. Like You feel you feel all the tyres moving around like they've they're run out of grip, and um, you think, well, how can that be possible? What's wrong? And then you, you look at your lap time, and it's you know it's, it's, a, it's a competitive lap time, but the, the feeling and sense of speed is so low that, that you think there's something wrong. You think, oh, I must be going. I've got to be going quicker than this. But... Um, yeah, as, as you said, we're seventh uh, in in BSB. Um, that's uh, you know, of course, not not our target. It's not where we're, we're underperforming at the moment. But um, you know, that's that's the nature nature of motorbikes and racing and race teams. You you, you know, you gotta you gotta work through the hard times and enjoy the the good ones. But um, yeah, at the moment, the team and I, uh, yeah, we're we're just in in a work period at the moment. We've got to. We've got to work harder and find solutions, and um, yeah, we haven't matched any of the of, of my previous best lap times and things like that. So there's most certainly um, time uh, to be found somewhere. We've just got to discover exactly what the the holdup is. Um, it's not been been clear at this point why why there's a lack of performance. Um, you know, everybody is equally uh, motivated to try and find the the competitive edge. Um, the the series is super super tough. You know everybody knows that we don't have to beat on about that. But uh, you know the the peak lap times that the the race winners are achieving aren't outside of the 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 targets we should be we should be meeting. So um, yeah, it's it's really it's really our lack of performance that we've got to focus on, not uh, not being um, you know overwhelmed by the the speed of our competitors. Any more coming in? Christy DeHaven on the old yeah, Facebook thing? Um, Vicky wants to know who you think are the new and upcoming riders to watch for so far. Um, well, I think we're, we're, we're in an era of, uh, of, a new, of a new range of people. You know, it used to be, um, you know, f- for John, he's not out of it, but it used to be, you know, John McGuinness, Guy Martin... Um, Bruce Anstey, Keith Amore, you know, Cam. Steve Plater, Cam Donald, you know, this is this is a, a generation of guys that everybody was coming to watch and and we're already in the new generation, you know, there, there is already the, the people we're talking about currently, you know, Dean Harrison, yeah. um, Hickman, um, you know, Michael Donald, though he's been and done already so many wins, he's still very young, he's mm-hmm. the next generation, mm-hmm. even though he's already clocked up a, ma- a massive tally. 
he is still the, the, the guy that's young and he's in this new generation. Um, hopefully the likes of myself will, will join those names and, and, and you know, the, the, there's, a, there's a list of people already that's the new generation coming through. So we've got at least, you know, 10 years or more at, at doing this before, uh, you know, there, there'll be another generation following us through. So, um, so who did or do you look up to then in the racing world? Um, well, I didn't really have any road history. Um, I knew of Joey Dunlop, but didn't didn't follow him massively. I just I just knew he was a guy that that raced on the roads, and he was probably the most famous name of me for me growing up. Um, I came from you know the idea of having a short circuit career, and uh, I only uh, you know explained to Paul Denning last night on Twitter that um, you know he was he was criticising the event and. Uh, I, I was su- su- just uh, suggesting him to think that there's not enough, um, you know, teams in World Superbike and MotoGP to house us all. Mm. You know, it's only a select few that ever get the opportunity to be in these fantastic teams and on these fantastic tracks with these fantastic paychecks. Um, you know, the rest of us have to make do with what we got. Mm. You know, we we would all love to be out there and, and never risk a... Um, any injuries and never have to worry about um, you know the bills that come in and have to be paid it'd be nice to be one of those you know Grand Prix riders that, that live that that luxury side of the of the racing but for the ma- for the masses we're, we're just trying to make it through you know and and um, and the Isle of Man TT is is the home that houses us and gives us the opportunity to to be the rider and, and have the dream and the and the goals and and achieve what, what we all set out for so yeah, the, the the beginning of that that point was um, yeah I wanted to I wanted to be in Grand Prix racing so I had of heroes like Valentino and Mick Doohan and you know that that was that was they were my heroes I wanted to go I wanted to go Grand Prix racing but like I said that doesn't happen for all of us. Josh, thank you very much for your time this morning. It's been nice to have you on. It's always very informative. Cause yeah. You're a very succinct chap when you talk and you explain things really, really well to you know, to people out there, to people who might not just understand the way you guys think mm. and the way you guys operate. Thank so thank you. you very much for that. And the moustache gets a million bonus points <laughs> straight away. <laughs> Lovely to hear from you, Josh. Yeah. Good luck for the rest of the week on the Norton and, of course, the Macam's Yamaha. And uh, thanks for being here on the chat show on Breakfast here on Manx Radio TT. No worries. Thanks for having us. Sorry I'm a bit, uh, a bit rusty. It's, uh, as I said, I'm not a morning <laughs> person. Too. But, hey, uh, listen, you're, yeah. far, you're far <laughs> better than, some, than sometimes we are first thing in the morning, Josh. I'm, How dare I'm far you. funnier and more interesting in the evening, so maybe put me on in an evening next time. Yeah, after nine o'clock. Okay. Coming up in a couple of moments, we'll have Tim Reeves and Mark Wilkes.